A 24.5 inch gaming monitor with 170 hertz refresh rate for around 100 buckaroos. Seems like one hell of a deal. Actually, I got it a few months back for 120, which is the original price. So should you buy it or should you go with a better known brand? Let's find out. Before I get into the video, I just wanted to make clear that I have not been contacted by Korui or anyone else. I decided to buy this monitor from Amazon out of curiosity, knowing very well that it could be complete in carbo. So this is the Korui 25E3A. I don't know why they name monitors this way. I mean, there, there is no monitor that's named normally, you know, something normal. And also I could be butchering the name Korui, but we'll just go with it. At first glance, the monitors look looks to be on par with the rest of the monitors out in 2023. It's got thin vessels on the top, left and right borders. The bottom border is thicker, probably due to controls and maybe structural support. I could just be making stuff up though. Looking at its side profile, it's pretty thin. You should not have any issues fitting this into your desk. The base is also pretty minimal and should work with pretty much all desk layouts. Nothing special here. It's comprised of pretty much plastic all throughout. Nothing wrong with that, especially at this price point. It does feel sturdy and solid, so I have no complaints there. So far, so good. How does the display actually look though? Well, let's just say I've seen better. It's not horrible, but I feel like it's a little dull. Right out of the box, the colors and brightness are just not very good. I had to increase the brightness and contrast to 100%. Then I realized that 100 contrast clears out some details, so I lowered it to 75. I was using it in a room next to a large window in the middle of the day, and it was still a little dim. The colors are also not very vivid. If it had an IPS display, then the colors would pop out more, and it would make it a much more enjoyable experience. However, it is lacking in the color department. At nighttime, or just in a dark room, it looks much better. Way better, it's a much bigger difference. Brightness is not an issue, and colors look better because they are clearer to see. And I think the clips I recorded really show that. You can tell that when the window's open, it's very dim, you can barely see what's on the screen. And when the window is closed and at nighttime, it looks just a lot better. It's a night and day difference. It does have a few different modes to choose from like standard, movie, FPS, RTS, and iSaver. Out of the box, standard and movie modes are exactly the same. The biggest difference is that you can customize standard mode by controlling the brightness, contrast, and color options. If you select movie, you won't be able to select those options to change them. As mentioned earlier, I am using standard with brightness of 175 contrast. I think we all know what eye saver mode is. It lowers the brightness and is meant to be used at nighttime with little to no light in your surroundings. It causes less strain on your eyes. FPS mode also gets dimmer and RTS mode gets even more dim than that. It sets the response time to the quickest possible time. With this monitor, that response time is one millisecond which is pretty darn fast, and it is standard with basically any competitive gaming monitor. It also has a few crosshair options that you can set. From my experience though, I didn't really find them too useful for the games I play. For a game like Far Cry that I was messing around with, the monitor's crosshairs don't line up with the game's one, so I just turned it off. I think for a game like CSGO it might be a little bit more useful, but I didn't really feel the need to use it. Viewing at an angle isn't very good. Colors are already not the best. Now as you move to the side, they look even more faded and washed up. So if you're gonna have people gathering around the monitor so you can show them stuff, maybe you're working on a project or some graphics or something like that, this one's probably not gonna be the best for that. The best viewing angle is if you're looking straight at it. For the price, they are able to make this a 144Hz display. I don't expect it to be perfect since it's on a budget. And it's not perfect, but it's still very good. I was moving some windows around just to get a feel for how smooth it looks. Same with moving the cursor and I didn't notice any type of ghosting or weird artifacts. I was afraid of that because of the price, but the refresh rate has held up nicely. I remember I didn't even have a monitor that went above 60 hertz until like five years after I started messing around with computers. That's a major selling point at this price. Most monitors at around $100 don't offer anything more than 75 hertz, so if that's something you're interested in, this is probably one of your best contenders. Gaming on it is nothing special. If you're able to take advantage of the 144 hertz with a, a PC that can do full HD at, at good frame rates, then you're golden. But if you're on a console like a PS4 or you're using a budget computer that's probably not going to go above 60 hertz or 60 FPS, then you might not notice such a big difference. And once again, the colors aren't the most vivid. You will struggle if you're in a bright room. You don't get much customization with the built-in settings and modes, but that 144 hertz is huge. Driving around in the GTA 5 world, everything looks smooth. I'm having a good time. And now that the trailer for GTA 6 just came out, I'm pretty stoked. Too bad it's until 2025 though. 
I also took time to catch up on some Far Cry 5. I had a blast with this thing. It's a great $100 deal if you're looking for a gaming monitor, and it would make a great Christmas present for little Jimmy who's trying to up his game. Oh, and I did mention a couple consoles earlier. This is compatible with, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, uh, Nintendo Switch. You know, it's not only to be used for PC. You can hook up other stuff to it as well. Just keep in mind that some consoles might not support the 144 hertz. I know the, the PS4, the original one, um, basically anything before the PS4 Pro probably doesn't support 144 hertz. As we move forward, let's take a minute to get to know the company, Cobrui, because I've never heard of it. You probably haven't either. We've all heard of Asus, Acer, HP, Dell, BenQ, the list goes on and on. But I just randomly stumbled upon Kurui on Amazon when I was looking for budget gaming monitors. And there's other brands as well that I've never heard of on Amazon. I feel like I'm seeing more of those stepping into the gaming PC, the monitor world, and other peripherals. And they're making budget products because they're trying to get their foot in the door. So I googled Kurui real quick. And it turns out it's a newer company established in 2021 from China. They make electronics and other items. I looked around the website and indeed they do have a few monitor models. There's a section for keyboards, but it's currently blank. So there might be some coming soon. And they do have some mounts so you can mount your monitors on your desk. Now back to the monitor. One thing I really do like about it is the IO in the back. Now I have an Asus 24 inch monitor that I bought a little over a year ago. I made a video on it and it only has one HDMI and one VGA connection. It's around the same price as this one. This one from Kurui has one display port and two HDMI connections. One of my complaints about the Asus monitor was the lack of video connections. You get exactly that with this monitor. So if this is your only monitor, you can hook it up to your PlayStation, your PC, your laptop, whatever combination of devices you have, you're good for three connections. Almost everything has HDMI and there's a good chance your computer has DisplayPort. So that covers it. I'd say that's a huge W for Kurui. Now this is a budget gaming monitor again, so you won't be getting the latest and greatest HDMI connections, so don't expect that. So what's my final conclusion on this thing? Should you buy it? For a hundred bucks, I would give it the green light if you won't be using it in a bright room or right next to a window. Once again, brightness is not that great in those settings. Any other type of setting and you'll have a great time. The refresh rate is something you cannot beat at this price point. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and as always. Screw you guys, I'm going home.